I'm going to record this just so I don't have to take notes furiously. I can actually pay attention. But, but I chair eight different committees on AI. Well, all with the FDA or with the um, the TC committees too? Um, the TC committees, some local um, US and uh, UK uh, standards uh, that I'll talk about in a second. Um, so the CTA standards organization doing stuff with the World Health Organization, uh, chairing of a subset of their um, I don't know if you've ever heard of MDIC, but I showed yep. their things. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they got a project about the ACP and SPS. So I'm one of the chairs for that. Um, and more stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. The one thing that I'm doing for uh, for the folks at Amy and BSI, we wrote a white paper a couple of years ago. People liked it, so we wrote another white paper. People like that. So we wrote another white paper about risk management and ML. Mm -hmm. And the feedback we got was, stop writing white papers, stop writing a standard dad. So uh, I co-chair, we got a joint Canadian BSI committee, um, we call it 34971. Mm -hmm. It's, um, if you remember how there's the IVD annex and 24971 that says, follow the same process, but here's the weird ways that it can fail. Mm -hmm. Same deal with what I'm doing for the machine learning stuff. Follow the same process, here's some weird ways to fail and some things to think about. Interesting. Um, also going to take in full some bias stuff in there too. Bias mm -hmm. management. Wow. That's fascinating stuff. But I'm, I'm glad that um, to hear all that actually, because that was one thing I was going to ask you about. You know, the FDA has got their, what do they call these things? Their the action plan thing. Yeah, yeah. The, the action plan things for AI. They just put out one on cybersecurity. And it's like you read them and it's like, but well, where's all this really going? Right. And, and it's hard to tell that their action plans, but it's hard to tell what the action is that right. it's going to come about. Um, so one thing I'm doing for an internal project is Phillips. They've been asked by a couple of the different uh, markets to basically say, hey, can you tell us what are, what's expected in China for uh, if for ML, medical device, what does Brazil want? What does the FDA want? And um, I haven't started it, well, I barely started it. Um, but what I'm picturing I'm doing is just having this big spreadsheet and having little subcategories of like, okay, what do they say about data quality? What do they say about data cleaning? What do they say about, you know, even in like annotation? Just have the major categories of stuff. And then have a column, here's what China wants, here's what Brazil wants, here's what Saudi Arabia wants. What had occurred to me was that where there's the strong themes, um, ooh, I could use those as places where we need to have some standards. Mm -hmm. And when I, I have calls every couple of weeks with at the FDA, and then occasionally just call me out of the blue. So I told both of them um, about that and said, uh, you know, hey, and this could also work. If you're interested, I'll share it with you. Because this could be like a gap analysis, mm -hmm. um, you know, of what is it that people are missing? What is it that they might be overthinking? And came back, he's like, that would be so cool if you can share it with us. And we can use that as the basis for the IMDRF plan. Um, mm -hmm. I'm one of the sub-team leads for IMDRF AI. So, uh, yeah, lots of, lots of moving pieces. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that sounds like else. that yeah, spreadsheet so. would like be where are the underpinnings, where we already in theory, agree, and let's start the standard writing at our points of concurrence, and then let's work out the the in next revisions the levels from there where there's uh, gaps or di or disconnects. Exactly. That actually sounds like a logical approach to standard writing. <laughs> So what is your thought about the FDA being interested in that kind of work versus kind of what, what are they trying to get or accomplish out of their action plans? My reason for the action plan was, um, but I'm not sure to write. Here's some thoughts that we have of what might be important. We want to reuse some existing stuff, but, you know, if we can also reuse some of the other initiatives that we have, like the evidence, the total profit life cycle, blah, blah, blah. I think they have a really blank page on what it is to, they're wanting. And they're still struggling with some of it. Uh, I know that they have uh, drafted up some additional paper. I don't think it'll be a guidance yet. 
So there's an additional paper I've been talking about on and off for a couple of years about what are the essential principles for ML and Mac device. And um, he has drafted up a set of, I think, either nine or ten principles, and he's just waiting through the process of the FDA to get it published. It'll, and it'll be out for comment. I, like I said, I mentioned him this big spreadsheet thing, and then also there's a um, horizontal standard that's just very initial draft, as in, like, the second week in July, they published an outline with a couple paragraphs in it, so really early stage. But this is uh, for VNV and the all systems, um, not specific to healthcare, just in general. And they had a big list of challenges of, you know, what's going to be different about this than doing normal testing. And so I forwarded that to because I thought it kind of aligned with where they saw the challenges is kind of where his essential principles were landing. Mm -hmm. So I'm spending a lot of time just connecting, <laughs> connecting people to other things. Yeah, it's one big connect the dots. So, you know, I've always seen these, these action plans and, and some different FDA position papers or strategic initiatives as like an opportunity for industry to get involved and tell the FDA what they think and what the regulations should look like. Are you seeing that industry is actually participating? I mean, you're one of the most consistent players I know that's been across the board, not just in AI, but, but forward thinking and systems engineering and 14971 and a lot of different areas. But in general, I don't see the consistency from, from industry, especially in small and mid-sized companies, telling the FDA what they think. Where, where do you see industry participation helping form these things? So um, MDIC, Medical Device Innovation Consortium, the FDA gives MDIC money to go look into things. And MDIC really only has like project management staff. They don't have any subject matter experts. And then everyone who's on it, so it's, they write white papers, not standards. Um, it's, it's many times a different set of people working on it um, than you would get from the standards folks. But for, um, like how the FDA called out the idea of a uh, software pre-specification SPS, an algorithm change protocol, ACP. Um, I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, when did that come out? Um, I think it was either 2019 or 2020. But anyway, the um, idea is for G, if it's a, a continuous learning system, then in your initial submission, don't just tell us what it does now, but tell us what extra specs, what extra performance things you're going to see in the next couple of releases that you plan on doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then also give us the protocol you're going to do to roll out these changes. So don't just tell us what the product is now, but tell us what it is now and what it's going to be in the near future. So basically get a blessing ahead of time for the changes you want to make. I, want to, I tried to get 5,000 uh, data points within the first six months. I'll have another thousand data points and I like to retrain it with that. And here's how I'm going to test it before I release it for human use. That way you don't have to do a new 510K. So after you had this idea, um, then they went to the folks at MDIC saying, hey, can you put together a committee, come up with a couple white papers. What does an SPS look like? And come up with a template for it. What does an ACP look like? The change protocol. Come up with a template for it. And write a third document telling people how these all fit together. So it's kind of like the FDA doing regulatory science. They're getting a, a set of advisors but for political reasons, rather than having them report directly to the FDA, they develop a something that the MDSC publishes for the FDA. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean they accept it or not, but uh, like their the FDA's case for quality project mm -hmm. and their pre-search and a couple other ones, um, they've all done through MDIC to develop some of the uh, more advanced concepts that's just a little short of a FDA guidance document. So some of the stuff that FDA is planning on doing, they're uh, letting these uh, external uh, third parties run it. And by the way, the people on it are Roche and Phillips. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I forget if uh, Siemens is there or not. Um, GE, et cetera. Well, and that's where I was also wondering, where does that leave the kind of startup world and innovators and small companies 
when, when those are the people that are sitting at the table and forming, you know, the kind of the thought leaders for the regulations right now. Right. And I don't know how they're handling the startups. I know that there's some smaller companies I never heard of that are on MDSC, but I'm not sure if they ever actually show up, you know, or if they mm-hmm. ever, you know, there's a couple consultants, individual consultants that I know, you know, an organization of one or two people mm-hmm. that are active in writing it. Um, but I don't think that those are the, I don't think that's the target audience you were talking about. Okay. Well, what are some, some hot topics? What are just some general hot topics in industry? Do you think about like, that everybody needs to be thinking about right now, I think would be a, a good, some good first questions. Um, the broad topics are what makes for good data quality. Um, other broad topic, and because it's open news, is bias management. So the healthcare and equities around that. I also think that, that they're trying to mix AI too much into the quality system, all in the same conversations as AI for regulatory clearance purposes. And, and I think that they're two totally different. You know, at least the Xavier conference, they talk about how to use AI to monitor your quality data and your quality mm-hmm. system, uh, which is a whole different thing than how to monitor your learning in right. your change control plan. I haven't seen anything from the agency about that. Right. Um, and I, I think that that's fair because for your bandwidth, especially because it's so early. And, uh-huh. you know, I was sit, I remember the last Xavier conference I went to in person. It's like the people I was sitting around just happened to be from all smaller mid sized manufacturers. And they were given some big presentation about using AI to mine your complaint data. And they're like, well, we get 10 complaints a month, so we just <laughs> self-mind it, you know? But yeah, it's, it's, a whole, it's a whole different beast on that side of the table. So what do you think, and this is something else I've had the opinion about, is that uh, this area is changing so fast that even if FDA got together a minimally viable set of guidance documents, how long would would the concepts remain viable, like these essential principles that you've talked about, these 10 or 11 or 12? Mm-hmm. How long do you think that those, how long have those been the core of AI and machine learning? And how long do you think that they'll remain? Like how consistent is this space in terms of being able to na- nail something down? And I, I'm thinking, I'm hoping that the idea of the essential principles will be, um, will last. It's just how you meet the essential or what the techniques are. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to evolve over time. The, please God, don't ask me how many uh, clinical samples do you need for your product? Um, you know, <laughs> the mm-hmm. sample size and the clinical trial and stuff. Don't know. And whatever I tell you now will be different two years from now. Um, but the fact that you need to meet these three criteria for data quality, for data cleaning, uh, I'm hoping um, would remain the same. Well, and that kind of makes sense. I mean, you look at the underlying, you know, the Bill of Rights and the Constitution and some Mm -hmm. of these things, they they say essentially the the, the same for centuries. It's just our interpretation application of them catches up to what society needs, ideally. Unless it's MDR and then that jumped way ahead of where (laughs) society needed. So where do you think all of this is going, since you're on some of the technical committees as well, where do you think MDR is going to take all of this? Given it's one of the few regulations that actually addresses software as a medical device. So I honestly haven't had the bandwidth to pay attention to the the EU proposal. I was relying on some other coworkers to deal with that. So my general impression had been This is a pattern that I've noticed in several different countries, but I think Europe leads the path for this. They have one government agency that says, we're going to be number one in the world at this. You know, our citizens are the ones that should benefit the most out of this. We're going to get our products out there the fastest. And then you turn and you immediately get hit in the face about all the privacy concerns and GDPR. 
it's like, okay, well, if I don't know anything about this patient, then I don't know how I'm going to manage bias. I don't know that I have a representative sample of patient data because you haven't analyzed all that stuff. Um, oh, and you're not letting me use it. You're only letting people that volunteer to give me access to the data do it. That introduces selection bias. Mm. Oh, by the way, your um, requirements are so high you're waiting for this thing to be perfect, it ain't gonna happen. I'm gonna launch, you know, in this country 10 years from now. Not first, China has the same thing. Um, I forget if it was Japan or some other Asian country that basically said um, the product can have absolutely no bias. Like, okay, well, tell that to the disease, because think about that. certain diseases have bias. So, you know, some of them are just, they aren't listening to themselves. Uh, we're number one, and don't you dare come in here unless mm -hmm. you're perfect. Well, and if we do that, as soon as you get to the point that you think that you're perfect, science advances, and you learn a whole new set of information and rules and selection criteria and all kinds of things that, uh -huh. that you didn't know because the technology wasn't there to know it. That's fascinating. Uh -huh. And I, and I also think this is a, another like big worry that I have. I notice that um, when a negative article comes out, it really impacts everyone. Um, you know, the, whatever is the most recent uh, self-driving car accident that uh, you've read about. I think mine was, there was road construction. And there was a sign up that said, turn right or turn left. Well, the software knew what to do on a turn left sign and knows what to do on a turn right sign. It didn't know what to do on a turn both. So it's a human takeover. A human wasn't paying attention, car crashed into the wall. I'm pretty sure that that's going to affect self-driving vehicles. And it's going to hurt more than Tesla. It hurts everybody. So anytime that the ML fails in healthcare, it hurts all of us. And so it's a weird position of, I don't want my competitors to fail, or at least not make the news. So do you know about the stuff that I'm doing for the World Health Organization? Basically, they want to develop a good housekeeping seal of approval because they're worried about companies um, making products and making really lousy claims and then selling the products in countries that don't have good regulators. Somehow, I ended up as a co-chair of one of the subcommittees on that, which is basically the assessment committee. So one of the little sub-projects is uh, combining all these different data sources and coming up with a list of audit questions for an ML system. In the meantime, the folks at MIDA, the Medical Energy Trade Association, we had wanted to come up with a list of what this could look like and things that you might want to tell the regulator to convince that it's useful and things you might want to tell the, the customer, build their trust. And uh, what I actually did was take that master list of auditing questions and then just add a little field and put a checkbox. I think this is what the auditor wants. Yeah, I think this is what the regulator wants. And you know, customer probably wants that too. Uh, oh, and also, if you're the internal quality manager for the product, for you know that project, what questions should you ask? Because they're different sometimes in the related mm -hmm. stuff. So together, this is just a big mashup of um, three to five different um, audit things that we found online. And right now, some WHO folks are refining it. So. Um, there's a lot of people that are seeing this is the pattern. Um, people are seeing the same common needs and are starting their own project um, <laughs> to try to take and solve it. And so that's why I currently have four different projects about data quality from totally separate organizations that don't talk to each other. You're very fortunate that, that your job seems to value your, yes. your participation in all of these groups, because I know it's a huge commitment for, for both you and for the company to be with, for this to basically be your, your nearly full-time job. Um, yeah, I am a bit concerned because I was recently kidnapped, literally was kidnapped and pulled into a new group. And it's to talk to some of the folks inside some more, but I'm worried that based on some initial conversations, they're going to want a lot of my time. That's going to break the other stuff. What is what is the topics that they're wanting you to talk about versus what um, you had been dedicated to in the past? Uh, some of it was like uh, how I mentioned the come up with the five major markets and what are the requirements. But uh, another project was what I call cloud of clouds, which mm -hmm. is wearables out there that post some data in clouds. 
and there's some algorithms that can be run off of um, that data. Now, Apple isn't going to run the algorithm, so we have to set up a separate cloud to execute some code based on data from a whale. So how do we explain that to a regulator? And how do you explain that to the person who's putting their data in the first cloud of the cloud? <laughs> Because Apple ain't never going to follow CTQ, you know, uh, you know, maybe the QMS stuff. Mm -hmm. So how do we take and mitigate that risk? And then there's some other ones that were are really wild because uh, different functionality can be uh, customers. Uh, this one might want option one, option three, and option five. The other one might want just option one, you know, two. So for the same platform, there's little plugins. Well, as it turns out, some of those plugins are hosted on clouds, and some of those are different clouds. And also, some of those options might or might not be clinically relevant. So, how do I explain <laughs> having this patchwork, this meatloaf of different kind of clouds, and it's going to vary from what one customer wants to another customer? And there are these weird hybrid multifunction things with some clinical functions and not clinical functions in them. How do you manage all of that? So, those things are going to take some time to develop, and. Um, and people are going to want to cut corners. And and it sounds a lot of work to define when mm -hmm. we already don't have the essential principles published. Right. So it's like we've got to start somewhere, and we but we have to start. Mm -hmm. All right, Pat. Well, um, hopefully our paths will cross sooner rather than later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hope we could speak together one day because we were we were so close there for a little while. Yeah, I know, right.